Woo! Okay, hello everyone! Finally, we are ready! Uh, at long last, um, I'm finally gonna do factions. Uh, it's been about two weeks since I did any episodes from the previous series, so I'm really excited about this. Uh, I've put a lot of effort into, um, the challenge and all this stuff I want to go over and stuff, so it just feels great to finally be here and doing it again. So, uh, I just, just before we start, I wanted to talk to anyone who's just sort of starting the series now. Um, if you're worrying that you haven't seen the first series, don't worry about it, you don't have to watch it at all. This game is the uh, second campaign that was released for Guild Wars, and it is set in a completely different continent, uh, miles and miles away from the events of the first game, and it's got different characters, and it's set further forward in time and stuff like that, so really, you don't need to know everything. I'll go over the basics, but you should be able to follow on just fine. Uh, if you want to know what this sort of Let's Play is aiming to do, uh, and all that kind of stuff, and how it relates to Guild Wars 2 and stuff, uh, you can either read the description, or if you really want, you can see the first episode of the last series I did, where I sort of explain. Uh, I think the description should be fine, though, so... Yeah, let's not waste any more time. Let's um, let's go in. Uh, I'm going to show you the trailer that was released for Factions when it came out. Uh, the trailer that came out for Prophecies wasn't that great as far as the story goes because it just kind of used a couple of the characters but never really went into the plot very much. But this Factions trailer is really good. Uh, it really does go over the plot points pretty well. It's set 200 years before the event of the game. Uh, and it's just a really good trailer, so I hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you guys after it's over. Many generations ago, Evil walked the shores of Kantha. It rode the wind and skulked in the shadows. Waiting for the right moment to strike. Alright, well, uh, there's the trailer. Um, we will learn all about the characters and what we just saw. Uh, like I said just now, um, it is all really quite important. So everything you saw there, we will will be explained to you eventually. Um, I hope you liked it. So, right, here we are. Uh, last Let's Play, we did Prophecies. Um, the first of three. Uh, now we're on to Factions. Uh, the second campaign released about six months after Prophecies. Um, and then, of course, the last one is Nightfall, which I'm hoping to do eventually as well. So let's click next. This is the character uh, creation. 
Uh, in Guild Wars, you've got eight. Oh well, you start off with six classes. In uh, Prophecies, there was just the Warrior, the Ranger, the Monk, the Necromancer, and the Mesmer. Oh, and the Elementor, sorry. But when they created uh, factions, they brought out these two extra um, professions. One's the Assassin, uh, a swift, silent master of shadows, daggers, and death. The Assassin can chain together increasingly deadly strikes that target a foe's critical areas, killing quickly and efficiently. And we've got, also got the Ritualist, who is a living conduit to the spirit world. The Ritualist spawns powerful spirit allies that inflict harm on foes and can channel restorative magic that heals and protects injured companions. Um, when they actually added these two uh, professions, it kind of threw the balance of the game completely out the window. Uh, so really it wasn't a very good idea. I think probably when they do Guild Wars 2, uh, we won't see any new professions. We'll probably just see new races. Um, but that's what happened, so we've just got to live with it now. Uh, last time we played as a warrior, and my reasoning for that was that if you're playing as one of the casters, you tend to just sort of stand on the spot and spam skills. It's not very visual or interesting to watch, so I wanted to play a melee class. Um, and I'm going to do the same this time, but because we've already done warrior, we may as well just go for assassin. Um, and I think a lot of people like the assassin profession, so there you go. Uh, we're going to be a male again. I really haven't decided about the way we look. Uh, I don't know. We'll just default it, shall we? Just go full defaults. Actually, this is a uh, this uh, campaign's a very Asian-themed campaign, so you can see all of the faces look Asian on this one. So you do look different to characters starting out in prophecies. Uh, let's just go with that guy, shall we? Uh, the skin colour's fine. Um, we'll go big again. There is an actual reason why I make people as big as they can be. It's because I like uh, the character to fill out the screen a little bit more. Uh, when we're running around. I don't like having this camera zoomed out really far. I usually play like that because it makes it easier to play but particularly for this I want to keep it you know, zoomed in a bit. And then of course we've got uh, just the original armor die which doesn't really matter because we'll change that soon. But there we go. So the name. Uh, I, I spent probably too long thinking of the name. I suck at naming things. I really do. Um, and in the end I just decided to go with a name that was kind of similar to what uh, we had before, so I'll just call him Tom Bluewood. I know it's crap, but I, I just can't name things. So, uh, we, when we go in, we're going to see a little cutscene, uh, but this cutscene has no uh, voice acting, so I'll read it out. Alright, so it says we're at the Monastery Overlook. You can hear the running water. Okay, so it says we're at Xingji Island. The year is 1582, according to the Canton calendar. It says that 200 years have passed since the Jade Wind remade the face of Canther. But the Empire of the Dragon still needs heroes. The Empire of the Dragon is uh, just another name for Canther, really. For decades, young Canthans have come to Xingji Monastery to learn from the greatest living hero in all of Canther. The Ritualist, known as Master Togo, and he does a nice little pose for us there. Very nice, Togo, very nice. Uh, yeah, he's um, a really important character. In the past couple of years uh, in this um, game world, he's done some pretty incredible things uh, to do with a war between the humans and another race. So we'll learn about more of him soon. So he says to us, greetings students, welcome to Xingji Monastery, Canther's premier training academy for young heroes. You have been invited here because you show great promise. You may talk to Instructor NG, Instructor Nj, uh, to learn the basics, or you may come with me and we will enter the monastery now. Yeah, so because this is a Canton, um, sorry, because this is an Asian sort of themed continent, all of the names are like really hard to pronounce, and I said at the start of the last series, I'm going to say it again, um, I suck at the pronunciation of things, and uh, it's going to be a lot worse here because I just, I, I, I'm just clueless, so you're going to have to put up with it, sorry. Uh, so yeah, we this is basically a tutorial area. Um, this little explorable that we're out in now, it looks very nice. Um, we can't actually really come back to after this, so it kind of is used just to introduce people to the game. But um, I think it's quite long and honestly a little bit boring, so I'm going to skip it and just explain briefly as we go along uh, how everything works, and then hopefully that should uh, have a bit of a faster open into the plot. So uh, these are a couple of the uh, trainers here at the monastery. This is um, Instructor NG, of course. And over here we've got uh, three people. We've got this man here called Lucas, uh, this guy here called Yijo Tan, and this woman called Taya. 
and of course Master Togo who sort of runs the whole monastery which is just up there um, and these three are basically students who are going to be coming to the monastery with us uh, they're not too important characters but Yijo Tan is he kind of becomes a bit of our friend um, so yeah pay watch out for him because he, he does become a little bit of an important character so I'm just going to run past these guys go up talk to them and then everyone's going to start talking and I've got to be really quick with reading it out so yeah here we go Hello Togo, yeah I want to skip it, let's go. He says, so you believe that you have no need of the basic lessons, eh? Well that may be so, but know that this, much is expected of your, you at your time here. If you're unsure, you may wish to reconsider. Yijo says, yes master, I'm greatly honoured by your confidence in me. I cannot wait to get to the monastery. And Lucas said he just wants a chance to slay something and Togo replies, you will have your chance Lucas, though I hope you do aspire to greater things. And uh, Taya says, yes, Lucas, like fighting for those who cannot fight for themselves. Uh, well said. Uh, yeah, so basically she's a monk. She doesn't fight herself. She's a dedicated healer profession. Um, I've already talked about in the last series how that dedicated healers really aren't so great. Oh, uh, Lucas replies, that's what I meant, of course. Um, and luckily that it's being taken out of Guild Wars 2, uh, which is pretty sweet. Um, so yeah, uh, and then of course we've got Yijo. You'll notice that Lucas has got like really white skin. Uh, that's because he's from a completely different land far away. Um, we'll learn about that sometime later. Yijo says, Master Togo, if I may be so bold, is it true what they say about you and the Emperor? That you are related? And in time, come on Togo, you can reply, come on. He says, I prefer not to, to discuss the matter, Yijo. And in any case, we have arrived at our destination. So basically they're going to walk through that. Of course Master Togo, forgive me for my forwardness. So this is Yijo, he says hello, my name is Yijo Tan, today is my first day too, are you not excited? They say the instructors here are the best in Kantha. So that's the monastery there, how this game works is it's basically, it's not a real MMO, It's a, they call it a cooperative online role playing game. You get explorable areas where you and your party goes through and then you get uh, outposts and stuff, it's basically a hub based online game. Uh, so we're going to go through into the monastery. He says, I am Ludo. Welcome to the monastery, young one. I trust that your time with Instructor NG was informative. <laughs> yes, it was very informative. I didn't even say hello to him. Uh, if you cannot learn it here, it may be that it cannot be taught. Okay, so he says, welcome. You wish to become an assassin? Then you should seek out Headmaster Lee in the monastery. She and her assistants will teach you everything that you need to know. Okay, I'll go seek her out. So can you let me in? Indeed I can, just let me know when you are ready. He says this will take you into the monastery. Once inside you will not be able to return to this beginning orientation and training with Instructor NG. I will need to outfit you with a weapon and a few skills before you can enter the monastery. Are you sure you want to? So this is our skill bar here. There are thousands of skills in the game, but uh, the unique twist about this game is that you can only have eight equipped at one time. So you need to be very careful about what you want to use. So he's going to give us our first few skills. So yes, let's go in. Okay, so this is the monas monastery. This is our first um, uh, town that we've ever been to. Uh, if I press M and look at the map, you can see that we were here at the Overlook, which is an explorable area. And now we're here uh, in the outpost. And when you're in the outpost, as you can see, there are lots of real players around. This is the uh, These are the only places really where you can just see other players wandering around in the world like you would in a typical uh, massively multiplayer online game. So, yeah, speaking of the map, um, in the last series, uh, I basically I didn't zoom out the map until right near the end. Uh, this time I'm going to do the opposite. Uh, so here we are. This is Shingji Island. Uh, this is where the game begins. And if I click, you can see we are. This map is nothing like the previous map we were on. Um, this is the Canton mainland here, uh, with two very interesting looking places here, uh, which we'll learn more about very soon. And um, you can see that there's an ocean here. This ocean is called the Unending Ocean. And miles and miles and miles north of there is where I filmed uh, episode zero, if you saw that. And uh, miles and miles and miles north of there is uh, where the first series took place. So uh, we're really not going to be dealing with anything that we really saw in the first series because we're just so far away. In fact, I think recently um, it was said that it would take about a month or maybe just under a month with good winds for someone to sail from the very, very northern northern place all the way down here so yeah it's quite the di quite the distance uh, so yeah um, we spoke to Ludo and got our first quest this is our quest log um, I'm only I'm gonna try through this let's play to only do sort of one quest at a time because if you've got loads then it's hard to sort of follow 
but this is our first one. We need to seek out Headmaster Lee. Now, Headmaster Lee is a woman who's the... Uh, every single profession has their own Headmaster. And you'll see them stood in a ring here, you see? These are all of the Headmasters. Um, and Headmaster Lee is our Headmaster because we're an assassin. Everyone gets split up when they come to the monastery. Um, and get put into basically their own schools depending what profession they chose. So uh, let's see Headmaster Lee, shall we? See what she's got to say. She says, Ludo sent you? Excellent. Your training begins now. Okay. So she says, The assassin's path is one walked on a razor's edge. One must learn to balance one's judgment as well as one's blade. My two apprentices can teach you much about being an assassin and about balance. One is an extremely talented young man named Jinzo. The other is Panaku. They are two sides of the same coin. Jinzo thinks of his path in terms of duty. Panaku in terms of pleasure. If you are ready to begin, find Jinzo in Sunkwa Vale for your first lesson. Grenth, bless your blades. Okay, so she just said Grenth there. Um, if you're just starting, you won't know who that is. Grenth is one of the five gods that the humans worship. Grenth is the god of death. Every profession uh, sort of chooses a god and follows them, except for the ele elementalists who follow everyone. Uh, I will look for Jinzo. Um, and the assassins follow two gods. They One of them is Grenth, who's like the god of death. So, yeah. She says, Welcome, I'm Headmaster Lee of the Assassins, known as... Ah, oh, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Takayan in the old tongue. The assassin profession is an honourable and necessary role. We provide provide justice to those who believe they are above the laws of nature and society. Often the delicate balance is upset and we are the only ones who can set things right. If you come with an open mind and a quick hand, I have much to teach you. Okay, so, um, yeah, Ludo gave us a couple of skills if you remember earlier. Uh, I'll just quickly explain what they are. This one's Shadow Refuge. Uh, if you want, you can pause the video and read the descriptions, I don't mind. Basically, that's the self-heal for us. This is called Unsuspecting Strike. It means if we hit an enemy who who's like got really high health like we just it's the first hit of the match of the battle sorry um we'll do loads of damage this is a resurrection signet which means if our um party members were out in the field if they die we can use this to bring them back to life and this is a spell that makes us throw three daggers and hit people so i did just say i'm not going to do like two quests at once very often but this quest is a very easy one that introduces us to the idea of partying so let's speak to ludo he says, are you heading out into Sunkwa Vale? Be very careful, young one. The Vale is a dangerous place, especially for a lone student. In fact, I was just helping Lucas, Kasai, Yun, Mai, Aeson and Taya arrange a group to travel to the Vale together. Maybe you should all go. Invite at least one of them into your party and I will meet you out there. Once you have arrived, I will tell you more about the area and the dangers you will find. How does that sound? So sure, I could use help. You can see he gives us a lot of experience for that. So it really is worth it. It's very easy. Um, so yeah, these are the henchmen here. These are basically people that you can add to your party um, and they'll help you out. The game is a team game, so basically it's, sui it's usually suicide to go out without a party. So these are who we'll be playing with mostly. You can see that some of them are the students that we met earlier. Here's Lucas um, and they'll be helping us out. For now, I only want to add one though because a lot of these quests seem like they're designed to be soloed. So let's add Taya and say, speak to her. She says, greetings, if you have need of healing, I will accompany you. Or did you have a question for me? So she's the monk, basically, I'm just adding her because she'll keep us alive. Okay, very nice uh, little pose she did for us there. Alright, so this is the portal that's going to take us from the, uh, the monastery itself out into the explorable area. So there's your loading screen. Uh, I'm here with Taya, as you can see. And Ludo's just waiting for us out here on these fields. Hello, Ludo. God, he looks angry, doesn't he? Oh shit. There we go. He says, I am pleased to see you out here, Tom Bluewood. As I said before, Sunkwa Vale can be a dangerous place. In addition to the usual mantids and kappa, you may find yourself facing more organised foes. The Naga have been sighted in the valley in increasing numbers lately. I certainly do not need to tell you to be careful around those snakes, do I? You will also see members of the Crimson Skull around the Vale. They are little more than thugs and cowards, but be wary of them. They are led by a former student of this very monastery, you know. I think this is why Master Togo has been so lenient with them. He hoped his former student would reform his ways. Well, remember to take care of yourself and always travel with companions. Good luck, Tom. Alright, so that's that quest done.
Uh, he talked about a lot of enemies that even if you've seen the previous series, you will have no idea what they are. Uh, we've got the Kappa, we've got the Naga, who was the other one he talked about? Um, I'm not sure, I can't remember. Uh, and also there's a guild of thieves and stuff around here called the Crimson Skull. Uh, this is the early area though, so even though he gave us quite a stern, and w stern warning there, uh, it's really not too dangerous. You can see the mountains over there in the distance. If we look on the map, that's these ones here. Um, but yeah, let's do our quest then. So our main quest is to locate uh, one of uh, Headmaster Lee's apprentices. He's uh, an assassin called Jinzo. So and we need to search the Sunkwa Vale for him. Thankfully, because uh, I played this game a few times before and because I sort of created a test character to see how everything goes, uh, I know where Jinzo is. Usually you can just press U as well and you'll get a nice little green star telling you where they might be. So yeah, the oh, Mantids, that's the one. These are the Mantids. Uh, they won't actually attack us, because um, they're so low level. Uh, but yeah, this can introduce you to the combat, basically. Oh, we uh, you'll see I'm not wielding anything. So let's go to our inventory, right here. And you see these are the daggers that the, the guy at the gate gave us. We'll equip those, and now we can use our skills. So if I use Unsuspecting Strike on this guy, you see I took a chunk out of his health straight away. Uh, and Taya can help me kill him. She's there, using her wand. Or is that a staff? I can't tell. I think it's a staff. There we go. You can see we're very weak at the moment, but um, we killed it. This bar down here is our experience bar. This green one at the bottom, when that fills up, we'll level up. We're already level 2, as you can see there, level 2. Uh, there's only 20 levels in Guild Wars. Uh, the game isn't designed around grinding your ass off trying to get to max level. Uh, basically, the game, until you get to uh, the very end of the game when there's no more plot to go through, uh, it's all about um, just going through the story at your own pace. Uh, I want to adjust the sound levels for a second though, because I think that sounds quite loud. Give me a sec. Alright, there we go. Uh, the combat sounds are a lot quieter now. Uh, hopefully you guys could hear me just then. I thought I had it okay, but I'm sure that was too loud. I'm very sure. Okay, let's kill this other mantid, and we can see Jinzo's just up there by that little building. See, uh... Cantha really does have some really unique and cool looking places. I think out of all of the campaigns, uh, this this one has the most original environments. So, here we go, here's Jinzo. He's, ooh, chickens, okay. Um, so he's here with this guy called Van Ying. He says, I am the best assassin student at the monastery, in case you have not heard. Yes, it is I, Van Ying, pleased to make your acquaintance. You are lucky to train by my side, I will teach you to be a better assassin. Okay, he's got some pretty cool daggers actually. Alright, so this is Jinzo, he's the guy we want to talk to. He looks so gaunt. Okay, hello Jinzo. Headmaster Lee is very wise and I am honoured to hear of her praise. I do not judge Panaku, but I do not claim to understand him either. I was born an assassin in a family of monks, and I am accustomed to being misunderstood, so in that way we are similar. Panaku and I, life and death, are gifts from the gods, but each has its price. Enough philosophy, it's time to begin your training. Okay, so he says that it is our solemn duty as assassins to be quick and precise with our blades. Your prey should not feel a moment's pain, it must die before it knows you have struck. I trust your steel is sharp, this exercise will sharpen your mind. Instructor Sue provided us with some target minions. Kill five of them and remember, every blade has two sides. My blade will strike you. Okay. So, where are these minions? I think he just summons them. Oh, there we go. We're going to talk to him. He says, I was born a killer. My family, monks, everyone, has counted it a curse. But teach it, my teachers say it is a great gift. Either way, a constant struggle rages within me. I do not find pleasure in what I do, the way my colleague Panaku does, but I believe it is a, sa I believe it is a sacred duty. Sorry, A gift given and a gift not used is a gift wasted, and I have no intention of allowing these blades to rust. Alright, the test requires that you kill five target minions. Now focus. That the guy says, watch me, I've done this before. Okay, I'll watch you. Looks like Taya's helping him out. So those minions, ooh, uh, are what necromancers usually summon. Uh, so if we were playing as a necromancer, we could use magic to exploit the corpses of our enemies and summon these minions out of them. Which is pretty cool. They're quite easy to kill. Again, this is, even though we've kind of left the original tutorial area, this starting part of the game does very much deal with teaching us about uh, the systems that happen. Okay, so how many is that? Three? Four? I love those chickens. 
Okay, are we done? No, okay, here's the last one. Very nice, okay, cool, easy enough. Alright, Jinzo, we're done. You did well. These were just mindless target minions, though. Someday, your target will be someone's sister, someone's husband, mother, or son. This knowledge is yours to bear. Okay, so by accepting that quest reward, you saw that my uh, bar went up. We glue a little bit. Um, and now we've leveled up. We're now level 3. So we can spend... Every time you level up, you get attribute points. Uh, and you can spend these attributes on making different st stats uh, better. So I can put them into dagger mastery so that I do more damage with my daggers. Or shadow art so that some of my spells do more damage. Or critical strike so that I critical hit more often. Uh, and that kind of thing. So for now I'm just going to keep raising my critical strikes and my dagger mastery. Okay, so now we can go find Panaku. He says, Panaku is ready to continue your training. He has much to teach you, but you must take his words with a grain of salt. Headmaster Lee often says we are two sides of the same blade. Panaku has a certain passion for his work that is foreign to me, and I worry about his effect on young minds. However, it is important that your training be balanced, so off you go. Seek him out in the Kenya province. So the Kenya province is another explorable area. We're Right now we're in the Sunkwa Vale. Uh, which you can see is quite a big explorable area. It covers most of these grasslands and this mountain here. Alright, I will seek out Panaku. Uh, and this next quest takes us to the, over here, right to the uh, the western side of the island, to the Kenya province. So yeah, Panaku sounds like a bit of a crazy guy. He just loves to kill people. Uh, before we go there though, because it's across the mountains, uh, when you go up into those mountains, uh, things get a little bit dangerous. Uh, a lot of those crimson skulls start appearing and all sorts of nasty things. Since we're only level 3, I think it's quite a good idea that we go back to the monastery now um, and get some more people in our party instead of just Taya. So, uh, in this game, when you've been to an outpost, you can always fast travel to it for free uh, whenever you want, however fast you want. So you don't have to waste loads of time running around. Uh, and when you do that, when you click the icon, you usually get a nice little description of what the area is like. So, uh, when we find new outposts, I'll be reading those out so that we know kind of what's going on, where we are, and what the place is about. So, as the ancient Canthan name implies, Shingji is the jewel of Canther. Headed by the legendary ritualist Master Togo, the monastery provides training to students of all heroic professions, including the ritualist and assassin professions, which are native to Canther. Graduates of the Xingji Monastery are recognised worldwide as masters of their chosen arts. Okay, so we'll fast travel there, and uh, I think um, I'm going to end the first episode there, going back to Xingji. Uh, I hope you liked the first episode. It will pick up quite a bit later on. Um, so yeah, I'll see you next time, everyone.